Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. We're back with another video in this series comparing different aspects of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. This will be a shorter one as we're taking a more bite-sized chunk of these games today and comparing the shrines. Shrines are one of the most commonly disliked parts about these games. There's a few outliers that like Breath of the Wild shrines, and there's a few more outliers that like the Tears of the Kingdom shrines, but overall they're both considered one of the weakest aspects of each game respectively. I myself don't mind either kind of shrine, but I don't always do them right away when I find them, just because I have to be in a specific mood to go do shrines and actually enjoy it. So while this puts me in a good neutral point to analyze the two fairly, it can also make it hard to find the good and the bad in them because I just don't have that strong of opinions on them. Also, shrines in Breath and Tears have a lot in common. They both usually contain a puzzle or a series of puzzles strung together and occasionally they contain a fight instead. A handful of shrines in both games are challenging enough to get to in the first place that there are no puzzles within the shrine itself, the challenge is reaching it in the first place. Regardless of the format, every shrine contains a small amount of loot and a single piece of currency used to buy more health and stamina. Aesthetically, the shrines from both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are interesting. Some people really like both, some people really like one and not the other, and some really like neither. Breath of the Wild's shrines have these vibrant blue and orange details, whereas Tears of the Kingdom's shrines have a more muted green and gold aesthetic. But I think that both bear the same general weakness. They both feel disconnected from the rest of the game's atmosphere. Both shrine forms look drastically different from anything else you'd find in either game. They don't seem to match anything, and feel much less natural than the other aspects of each world. And it's not just the color scheme either. The massive open rooms and constant infinite pitfalls make many of these shrine rooms much larger than even the largest rooms in Hyrule Castle. And so it just feels wrong. In these aspects, both shrines have the same weakness. But what about the puzzles? Well, I think that each game has one really big weakness in this regard. Breath of the Wild's puzzles are often trivially easy, so they can get boring pretty quick. Once in a while you'll come across something really creative, but most of the time they're pretty simple and dull puzzles and you'll have them figured out within about 5 seconds. And that's about all there is to say about Breath of the Wild's puzzle problem. Tears of the Kingdom has a different problem, which is more complex and it's related to its runes. I'll do a breakdown of runes in another Breath vs Tears video, but we have to talk about one aspect of runes here. The runes add a lot of versatility to the game and allow you to often find multiple solutions to one puzzle, and this is good. But it is not without its drawbacks. The same runes that can make the puzzles creative and multidimensional can also be used to completely break those puzzles or to skip them altogether. The number of puzzles I've been able to skip by just holding a board in the air recalling it to keep it in place, and then ascending through it to get over a low wall is quite high. And even just having the option to break these puzzles can really take you out of the game, whether you're someone who exploits that kind of thing or not. Breath of the Wild may have had more boring shrines, but the runes in that game had limitations that made them more appropriate for puzzle solving. So as far as I'm concerned, based on what I've said so far, the shrines are basically tied in these two games. Both games' shrines have a pretty substantial problem, but it's difficult to say that one is more egregious than the other. But there are two things that keep this from being a tie. The first is that there aren't any shrines with those motion-controlled apparatuses in Tears of the Kingdom. There weren't that many like that in Breath of the Wild, but those were the worst shrines. So not having any in Tears is a plus. The big plus, however, is how Tears of the Kingdom handles its combat shrines. In Breath of the Wild, there are combat shrines called Tests of Strength. These pit you against a single Guardian Scout, which can range from easy to moderately difficult. And these shrines are fine. They're pretty quick, and I enjoy them enough, but Tears of the Kingdom does combat shrines so much better. Tears of the Kingdom has a new set of combat shrines called Proven Grounds. In these shrines, you're not fighting one big mech, but several smaller mechs. Here's the real twist, though. You can't use any of your accumulated gear in the Proven Grounds Shrines. That means no food or armor other than what you might find in the Shrine, which means you can't tank your way through fights. The only weapons you can use are the ones the Shrines provide to you, and by extension you can't use very strong weapon fusions either. These Shrines pose some genuine challenges, and really show how limitations can sometimes be better than freedom when it comes to making a fun game. The Proving Grounds Shrines can only be beat through careful tactical methods. Some of them may take several attempts due to their difficulty, especially if you don't have that many heart containers yet. So overall, Tears of the Kingdom probably has the better shrines. 
Most of the shrines for both games are about on par with each other as far as quality goes, at least in my opinion, despite the problems with Breath of the Wilds and Tears of the Kingdoms being different. But Tears of the Kingdom doesn't have apparatuses, which is great, and it has some phenomenal shrines in these proving grounds that tip the scales in favor of Tears of the Kingdom. That's all for today. More videos will be out soon. Bye.